Hello, my name is Amy Sturkey. I am a pediatric physical therapist and I am with my co-instructor who is a client of mine. So unfortunately you don't get to see his handsome face. So it's your loss. Um, I've asked him what nickname he, he would like to go by. And he says that people call him Bubba. So Bubba is a young adult with athetoid cerebral palsy and um, he is smart and he um, can walk independently, but he has to be spotted very closely for safety. He has a hard time isolating out um, movements. And on previous videos, we've done wrist extension, elbow flexion, and shoulder flexion and extension. And on this video, we're gonna start doing a lower extremity movement. Um, so we're on the screen we, with um, the options, shoulder, ankle, elbow, wrist, and knee. And we're going to choose the knee. And we're going to choose his left one because he has a little bit more control with his left side than his right side. I'm not sure it really matters for the movement we're going to do uh, because it's done bilaterally. Um, but we're going to choose left. We have two movements to choose from. So one is where you're sitting and extending and flexing your leg. And the other one is where you move from sitting to standing in a chair. I've asked Bubba which one he wants to do, and he wants to do the one sitting to standing. I, uh, full disclosure, have never done the sit to stand one, so you're going to see some interesting things. And full disclosure, uh, Bubba has never done this leg one either. So um, let, I'm gonna choose the sit to stand one. And it says that it, on the next screen, it has um, the uh, placements of the sensors. There are two sensors that we have, one with a green light and one with a blue light. And you have to put the sensors on very specifically. So it says the blue one needs to go up on the thigh. Mm -hmm. Open it up all the way. Let's see if I can get over your big size 13 plus shoes. Oh, well, good, I did. And I use two uh, bands on my sensors because it makes it easier to accommodate uh, different sizes from a wrist all the way up to a thigh. So I'm gonna pull that tight and let me see, sweetie, pull that one tight. You need to make sure that wherever you put these sensors, I've got it mid-thigh on him, that it's some place that it can stay and not move. Because if they move after you go past the screen, then um, uh, the gameplay starts to be fairly wonky and doesn't work. So you want to make sure uh, you get it accurate. Um, the next one goes on the, on the lower leg. And you just, again, there is a green light that's asymmetrically placed, you want to make sure it is down. Uh-oh. Um, I now notice that I put this one on upside down, so I'm going to fix it so quickly. Again, these are the kind of errors that when you make them, if you don't get them right, the gameplay is going to look like the game isn't working. So you want to make sure you get it right. So, uh, I just... Hello? Down. I got it. Okay, try this again. Again, putting it middle thigh. And I want to make sure it's tight enough that it's not going to move. And that blue light is down. Oh, no! We've got the green one, and I need to make sure the green light is down. I've got it here, green light is down, and I need to tighten these up because again, you want to make sure that these don't move after you pass the screen. All right, so it says place the sensors with the blue light above the knee and the green below the knee, and um, we're going to go on to the next screen. So now it shows on here um, the movement that we need to make. So you need to stand up. 
I'm going to keep a hand on you. Try not to take me out. Uh-huh. And what I'm noticing is that you don't go through that full range of movement and sit down. Let's try again. Let's stand up. And it's not catching you, your movements. So, let's see. Oh, I'm moving sensors. All right, so I am going to go back and choose my, my movement again and get these sensors. I'm going to put this a little bit more distal according to the picture. Okay, and this one, it's showing it about mid-shin. It's about where I've got it. Okay. I wonder if you start standing up on this one. Can we see? Can you stand up for me? Okay, let's go to the next screen. And sit down. Nope. Let's go back. Let's start sitting down. And let's go here. All right, let's try standing up. Oh, we have good sensor readings now. And down. Stand up. Mm-hmm. And down. I love it. All right, so uh, I have found that you need to really make sure that the sensors are picking up your movement, and if you don't have that right, then you need to go back and try it again, just like I just did. So now when he stands up, this little arrow goes from the bottom of the range to the top of the range, and when he sits down, it goes back down again. That's perfect. All right, we're ready to go on to the next screen, and we get to pick a game. Uh, Bubba says he wants to try a new game. So the easiest game is this basketball one and then maybe the dinosaur one. Um, we've got a caveman one where you, you run back and forth. And we've got uh, a pig that flies up and down. A pig that flies up and down, very nice. Um, so I think when you stand up, the pig is going to fly up. When you sit down, the pig is going to sit, go down. Let's find out if my guessing is correct. Mm. All right, so you're going down, so you're going to need to stand up to make that pig go up. Mm -mm. And sit down. Hmm. Let's try it again. Let's go up. Mm -hmm. So we're not able to get to the range that we need to get to, so let's go back and try again. Yes. Are you sure you want to exit? Yes. I'm wondering if he started out with his knees not bent well. Um, as you saw there, his legs were fairly straight. And if he started from that screen with his knees that much um, bent, then it, it, um, that straight, then it may have messed up our, our movement. So let's try it again. Let's get on this screen. Let's go, mm, let's make sure we're here with everything bent right. And we've got you bent. Let's try going down and up again, sweetie. Mm-hmm. We're going to go up, okay, and down, uh-huh, let's go up, it's just not reading you well, and down, let's go up, uh -huh. and down. I'm wondering if this is the best movement for you. Let's go up. Mm -hmm. That time it read you well. And down. One more time. Up. Mm -hmm. 
and down. Okay, you willing to try it again? Like here, here it's frustrating. This is a this is a difficult game. Do you want to keep trying that game? No. Um, let's try another one where um, you go left and right. Do you want to do the grocery cart or uh, the spaceship? The spaceship. Okay. Shorten, so I have a choice of shortening up how long the game lasts, how fast the speed is on the game, and the focus position. So um, I can choose if more things happen on the left of the screen or the right. So let's see. All right, let's see if you stand up if you change directions. Stand up. Good, so it's going to the right. And you want to try to shoot those things that are coming down. Uh huh. Now we want to get these. So see if you can come back, stand back up, and it'll bring it back to the right. Nice. I better sit down, or you're going to run into them. There you go. Perfect. Come on back up to get that ones on the right. There, and sit back down. Oh. You got the ones up at the top, but you didn't get that one. Let's see what the next ones are. That one's coming over here, so stand up to get it to go off to the right. Let's see if we can get there in time. Ooh, it's gonna be tight. Ooh, better sit down. You're about to run into it. Ooh, that was good. All right, bend your knees and stand. Oh, we can get this one over here. There you go. Now, in order to go back this way, you're gonna have to stand back up. Nice. All right, sit back. Uh-huh. All right, let's start off with those knees bent. And let's stand up to make it go to back to the right. Oh, and that was the end of the game. All right, I noticed that this one did not seem to respond as well. It did work pretty good, but it was a little bit trickier, wasn't it? Um, so uh, the next screen has a choice of um, how much pain did you have? Um, oh. My understanding is, is that some uh, physical therapists work with people such as people who have uh, burns, that they um, have pain when they do movements. Uh, my friend Bubba had no pain with this. They, um, physical therapists requested this screen to be able to keep data on the pain levels that people were having. Mm -hmm. uh, what we saw is that he did seven repetitions uh, and it lasted 89 seconds. That was, and you can see the graph of his movement. Nice. All right. Um, what I see when I work with clients on this activity is on this, with this Habble up is uh, I have about five clients of my caseload of about 40 that it's really dead on appropriate for. It seems to work best for my clients who have athetosis or ataxia. Those clients tend to be smarter as well so they can understand the game mechanics and are motivated by it. Um, I think it would be appropriate um, when we do the ankle. It would be appropriate for people who, have, uh, who are toe walkers. I also have a client who has leg perthes disease, so we do a lot of isolated hip extension, uh, hip abduction movements, so it's an appropriate activity for them. Um, I think that this is um, a, a way that it can make it more motivating for my clients to do the activities that they might otherwise be going like, oh, I can't believe I have to do that again. Um, I hope this was helpful for you. I think it was good for you to see the kind of problem solving that I have to do with this unit when I don't get exactly the movement that I want. Um, and um, I'm gonna do one more video to show how you do this with ankles. I hope this is helpful and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, bye-bye. If you liked this video and would like to be notified by email when the next video comes out, click the subscribe button here and click the golden bell icon and ensure notifications are enabled on your account.